Should we be avoiding services like Netlify, Vercel, and Cloudflare? Well, in my opinion, mostly no. We shouldn't be avoiding them because they're all incredible. But I just read an article that kind of talks about one of the aspects of each of those that you need to consider when you look at deploying your application. And I think this consideration is true for any service that we use, and it's the idea of vendor lock-in. And the way we've kind of progressed in web development is we've We've created these different services to do a bunch of different things for us. I talk a lot about Cloudinary for images. I talk about uh, using Clerk, for example, with authentication or Sentry for error tracking and alerting and Zeta for database. And it, all of these have abstractions and they do come with vendor locked in, lock in. So it's something to consider. But I thought this article was really interesting. I'll have a link in this below. Uh, this is from the Go Make Things newsletter from Chris Ferdinand. He does daily newsletters and they're really incredible. I would go and check them out, support it, read the article, let me know what you think. But he started by referencing an article where he wrote, every dependency is a potential vulnerability. So when we think about dependencies inside of the JavaScript ecosystem, everything we do has tons of dependencies. And it's really interesting to think about how we install a package, it installs a hundred other packages, and that's just kind of the way we work. We don't really think about the fact that we're adding all of this code to our code base and there could be potential vulnerabilities or any number of things inside of that code that we add. And one of Chris's biggest ideas is do as much in vanilla JavaScript as you can, which would help kind of mitigate that. And then he started to get into uh, things like Netlify, Cloudflare, Vercel, and how he recommends them to clients and students because they offer a ton of features that make them go faster and easier to get started than building out your own infrastructure. I think this is definitively true. If I have an application that I can host on Netlify, Cloudflare, or Vercel, I'm probably gonna do that. Now, I actually just released the video on AWS Amplify that I'm excited to try out as well, so I think that is really interesting. But any of these options all have abstractions for you that let you connect to a GitHub repo, they take care of deployment for you, they take care of creating your API endpoints, your API routes and serverless functions, et cetera. So there's a ton that these things offer. Uh, he talks about uh, offering serverless functions that let you run server-side code without having to manage a server. This is huge. This is such a big deal. This has really been a game changer for me of being able to build and deploy a full stack application in the last few years with any of these services and it be free. Like that's really wild. Um, Cloudflare Workers even offers database where you can read, write, long-term storage. They have so many features. It's ridiculous how much they have. And he says, these services are great until they aren't. And the first thing he mentions, I think, is really, really interesting. It's the idea of like, what if there's an outage? And my take on this is I think it's much more likely for me to write something wrong in my infrastructure or have some setup wrong in my infrastructure or not have something ready to automatically restart a server if it fails or something. I think it's much more likely for me to have that issue if I'm building out my infrastructure than it is for something like Netlify, Cloudflare, Vercel. So if those services are having issues, that's a bigger problem for the world. And it's not one that I'm as worried about from a vendor lock-in perspective. That's probably not exactly vendor lock-in, but I think they do a better job of infrastructure than I will myself. Now this could definitely be different for bigger companies that have a lot more expertise than, than me or maybe you as well. Um, he also mentions the big increase in fees or a comically large surprise bill. And there's actually a Reddit post that he links in here, which is Netlify sent me a $104,000 bill for a simple static site. I think we've seen, I've seen examples of this happening on Netlify, happening on Vercel, happening on Cloudflare as well. I've seen this everywhere. And I, I don't think that's the norm. Obviously something goes wrong. There, there is a chance that sort of thing can happen, but almost all these services now give you the ability to add a cap. And if I have a website, my cap's gonna be five, $10 if I expect to pay anything for it. And so I think that really helps mitigate that issue. I think you also, if you're running your own service and infrastructure, there's a chance that I could run code myself that could jack up a huge high bill on wherever, wherever I'm hosting that like raw server. There's a chance I could do that as well. So I think this is less of a concern as well, but again, goes on to vendor lock-in. And I think this is, uh, this is definitely true. When one provider handles hosting, automated deployments, microservices, serverless APIs, provides your database through their proprietary API, migrating to somewhere else becomes expensive. And this is true. Um, I think one of the benefits of AWS Amplify, for example, is because you're hosting in AWS, if you're building all your other services with AWS, you get this benefit of all the things work together and are all in one place. And I think that is a benefit 
but also obviously does come with uh, lock-in or at least maybe not as strong as lock-in, but at least a, a amount of effort that it takes to move somewhere else that he's saying. Again, I don't think this is as much of a concern because if we're doing anything, there's lock-in. If you're doing like a database, for example, if you're doing something that has proprietary APIs, yes, moving to another database now becomes a little bit more difficult. But I think we kind of have this idealistic view of I should be able to move my code anywhere and use any database. And in reality, one, we rarely have to actually make that decision. And then also rarely do we not ex do we expect that to just be perfect? Like that's not really reality. So um, I don't I don't know what the huge alternative is here. Like I think the big alternative is you you run your own VPS virtual private server or whatever you pay five dollars a month and you can deploy whatever you want. But then the idea of setting up your own automated deployment, setting pushes or setting builds based on pushes to a GitHub repo, error tracking, alerting. If you're not using a service for that, how good is the stuff that you have to manage it? How good are you at restarting services or debugging what's going on? I, I honestly think these services are going to do an infinitely better job at all of those things than I will for myself. So I love the conversation. I'm curious what you think. Do you see really strong limitations in vendor lock-in for working with services like Netlify, Cloudflare, Vercel, AWS, Amplify, et cetera? Do you see that as a hesitation on your end? And what would be your biggest alternative? Where would you go and build a thing where you don't have vendor lock-in? Because I think vendor lock-in exists basically everywhere. Anyways, go and build your thing. Do whatever works for you. Have fun while you're building. Keep these things in mind and just go out there and do something fun. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.